Using the tools from the last lesson, we will see the different shapes that molecules can adopt. Our goal for this lesson is to go from a molecule's name to its molecular geometry. VSEPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion, and it's a technique of turning a Lewis structure into a three-dimensional shape. The VSEPR procedure can be neatly summarized as follows. We consider anything bonded to the central atom to be an electron group. In practice, these are either lone pairs or other atoms. Electrons, being negatively charged, repel each other. So the electron groups spread out as much as possible around the central atom. We'll find axe notation incredibly useful since each unique axe combination directly corresponds to its molecular geometry. We will start with geometries that do not have any lone pairs. In axe notation, these are the ones with E equals zero. We'll go from X equals two through X equals six. Throughout every shape, keep in mind that the electrons forming the covalent bonds are negatively charged, and therefore they will try to be as far apart from the other electron groups as possible. When two atoms are bonded to a central atom and try to stay as far away as they can, they form a line. The geometry of AX2E0 is linear. The bond angle is 180 degrees. When three atoms are bonded to a central atom and try to stay as far apart as they can, they form a flat triangle, which we call trigonal planar. The bond angle is 120 degrees. When four atoms are bonded to a central atom, their geometry is tetrahedral. The bond angle is 109.5 degrees. When five atoms are bonded to a central atom, their geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. It sort of looks like two three-sided pyramids stuck together. Three atoms form a ring around the equator and have a bond distance of 120 degrees from each other. The fourth and fifth atoms are on the poles and have a bond angle 90 degrees from the equatorial atoms. When six atoms are bonded to the central atom, their geometry is octahedral. It's like if two four-sided pyramids were stuck together. Every bond angle is 90 degrees. Now we'll complicate things by including lone pairs. But first, we need to discuss two kinds of geometries, electron geometry and molecular geometry. The difference is whether we see the lone pairs. In the electronic geometry, we treat the lone pairs equally with the bonded atoms. So we are only concerned with the total number of things around the central atom. There are only five possible electronic geometries, and we already saw all of them two slides ago. In the molecular geometry, we pretend that the lone pairs are invisible. Of course, they are still there, and they still take up space but they're colored white on a white background and we only pay attention to the orientation of the atoms. The molecular geometry is by far the most common. Using water as an example, the view on the left shows the electronic geometry, including lone pairs. But you are probably much more used to seeing water drawn as it is on the right. The lone pairs are still there. We just can't see them. We'll run through each axe combination here, but keep in mind that everything in the same column has the same electronic geometry, which we've already discussed the names of. So first, things with three groups. The electronic geometry is trigonal planar. And when all three groups are atoms, the molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. But if we swap out an atom for a lone pair, we call the molecular geometry bent. Next, things with four groups have electronic geometry tetrahedral. When all four groups are atoms, the molecular geometry is also tetrahedral. 
When one of those atoms is replaced with a lone pair, the molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal because it looks like a pyramid with a triangular base. When two atoms are replaced by lone pairs, the shape is called bent. This is the shape of the most famous molecule, water. Things with five electron groups have electronic geometry trigonal bipyramidal. When all five groups are atoms, the molecular geometry is also trigonal bipyramidal. When one of the atoms is swapped with a lone pair, the shape becomes a seesaw. Note that lone pairs would rather occupy equatorial positions because it keeps them a maximum a distance away from the other electron groups. Lone pairs are all negative charged, so they try to stay quite distanced from the other electron groups. When two of the atoms are swapped for lone pairs, both lone pairs occupy equatorial positions and the molecule is T-shaped. Finally, when three atoms are swapped for lone pairs, the lone pairs fill up the equator and the molecule is linear. Things with six groups have octahedral electron geometry. When all six groups are atoms, the molecular geometry is also octahedral. If one of the things is a lone pair, then the molecular geometry is square pyramidal. If two things are lone pairs, then the geometry is a flat square called square planar. I don't have pictures for the following, but if we were to continue adding lone pairs, we would get another T-shaped molecule, then another linear molecule. However, it's very uncommon you would see those. The last thing to mention is that regions of high electron density have a high negative charge, meaning they are extra pushy to the other electron domains. Specifically, lone pairs and double bonds will take up more room in a molecule than single bonds. And this pushes the other groups a little further away. Keep in mind that this will change the bond angles accordingly. And that's VSEPR. These last three slides simply contain a summary of the geometries we just discussed. See you next time.